Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorine, and uh, today I'm meeting with Alexis Finet, a good friend of mine from the Department of Modern Languages and Linguistics, who is uh, pursuing a PhD in French. So Alexis, I know everything about you, but not the people who are watching this video. So tell me or tell the, the, um, our fans of Coffee and Conversations about um, about yourself. Who is Alexis Finet? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, so I am a PhD student, as you said. This is my fifth and maybe last year. Uh, my research go, covers Congolese literature and also sound artists. I look at novel, poetry, and musicians. Well, I call them sound artists from the Congo region. I also reflect on the notion of Congo, what it is exactly, like to, like the phonological Congo without writing it, because when you write Congo with a C or with a K, it's already implying kind of a judgment historically and socio-historically. Uh, I'm also a musician. I play the flute and I play some guitar. I used to play a lot uh, in venues in Tallahassee, but I don't anymore because they're all closed because of the COVID. Uh, but I still play now and then just with friends or with my band. And um, yeah, that's who I am. And I'm from France. I'm from Orléans in the center of France, actually a very small village close to Orléans. And I've been in the US for, well, I don't even remember. I arrived in the US in Mississippi in 2012. I moved, I took a year off the US to live in Colombia, in Bogota for one year in 2015. And then in 2016, I arrived in Tallahassee where I started my PhD. This is so interesting. I didn't know you arrived in 2012 because I arrived in 2012 too. Yeah, you go. Yeah. And I also took one year off, but it was in 2015. Uh, no, 2014 and 15. Um, so how did you, you started in Mississippi um, yeah. and you are now in Florida. Um, so what happened? How did you end up at FSU? Why did you choose FSU? Why FSU? Well, I was looking into PhD programs, so pretty much in pretty much in a lot of places. Uh, I was kind of between linguistics and cultural studies, but because I like both, and I still do actually, I still take linguistic classes and I still do a lot of linguistics. But um, I was looking into cultural studies programs across the country, and I found two strong programs that I really liked. Uh, one at FSU because of the Winter King and also a lot of conferences and some of the professors, but also the other one at Penn State. And, and actually, I got accepted in both, but I ended up choosing FSU maybe because of Florida and the heat, and I don't know. But also, FSU was maybe a bit more attractive to me. Um, also, I'm not going to lie, the assistantship was slightly better. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, um, it's a big um, something that we have to think about. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing at, uh, in Mississippi? So in Mississippi, I was doing, I did two master's degrees. The first one in teaching languages that I obtained uh, after two years. And the second master's degree in flute performance, because I was there and I was like, why not get a master's in flute? I didn't have any master's in music. So, so for those, um, for the, the people who don't know what is a flute, can you? Um... A flute, the transverse flute, like, you know, it's a tube, you blow in it and it makes noises. You have many flutes. You have the silver flute, that's the most commonly used in classical music, orchestra, but I play lots of flutes, like Irish flutes, the small recorder flutes, like, like all these kind of things. All right. So um, tell me more about your research. Um, if you had to um, um, talk about, like explain what is uh, your research about to people who don't know about it, because you started talking about the Congo with the C and with a K. Um, and I know what you're talking about because I'm familiar with the topic, but I'm sure some people, um, you lost some people. <laughs> so can you talk about your research? Um... Yeah. Um, so the Congo is, before being a country, two countries actually, it, it, it's a word that means uh, a lot of things, right? It's used up to Caribbean writers, use that word as a place of kind of origin, reference. Up to New Orleans has a place called Congo Square. Uh, that's a very famous, infamous, I would say, place because this was, this was where slaves were being detained and, and exchanged. Um, and 
my take is to try to look at the whole place in, in Central Africa. So for those of you who really don't know anything about it, uh, Congolese, the Congo River is basically one of the biggest, I think the biggest river in Africa that runs through the center. And you have two countries next to it, um, countries that were like whose borders were actually drawn during the colonization up to 1960, this kind of era. And so you have on the left side, Brazzaville, Congo, which is the Republic of Congo, and on the right side, Kinshasa, Congo, which is the Democratic Republic of Congo. So the big but one and the small one. The big Congo and the, yeah, a lot of people coming from there actually refer to it. I'm from the big Congo, from the small Congo. Uh, the big Congo is also famous for the Zaire period. It used to be called Zaire uh, in the late 20th century because of the dictatorship of Mobutu, who wanted to completely forget about the word Congo. Um, and, and my take is to try to look at it as more uh, the region around the river, the Congo River, rather than the national borders that are always complicated when you look at it in terms of identity, in terms of cultures. And, and to completely uh, drift away from, because when you, when you use Congo with the sea, it's pretty much the Congo, like the countries and everything on the river. And Congo with the K is kind of, um, uh, coming back to the roots before colonization, what was uh, the Congo tribe? Because Congo from, comes from a kingdom, there was a, a lot of uh, a big Congo, uh, a big kingdom, sorry, tribes. Congo with a K kind of refers to this pre colonization, the will to create a history that completely forgets about colonization. And Congo with a C is kind of okay, so we just accept the colonization and it's mostly based on colonization. My take is well, for me, history is both, right? You cannot. You cannot deny your past. Whatever it is, good and bad, like what you are today comes from what it was yesterday, you know. And so that's one of the ideas. And the reason why I use my dissertation, Congolese, uh, phonological Congo, so I use the, the, the slashes that we use in phonology. Uh, it's because when you hear Congo, when you hear the word Congo, first of all, it's like it could be many things, it could be a place, it could be a myth, it could be to some people, it's almost like I'm thinking of Césaire and his famous line. Well, Amy Césaire is a, is a post-colonial thinker from the Caribbean. And he wrote, à force de penser Congo, je suis de revenu Congo. Like, the more I was thinking Congo, I became Congo again. So it's like he's, he's talking about blackness and the notion of being, you know, um, a descendant of slaves. And for him, it's like Congo is kind of this metaphor for like all the black Atlantic trade and all the slave trade. So, yeah, and I'm looking at it also through sound and liquid. Because by reading poetry and novel, I realized that liquids and in all their forms, but also sounds in all their forms, often interact and they're, they're omnipresent in the corpus of text I found. Uh, and I was very intrigued by that, fascinated, and I was like wondering if there's not meaning that, like a, a literary meaning that can be given to that, that participates in, the, in, the, in like working on that argument that that the phonological Congo actually can be seen. So if you look at water, like not just water, but liquid and sound, instead of looking at this happened, this happened, this happened, you can also work the world where we forget about like good and bad, but this is something that's a combination of everything, the nature, the geography, the society, the history, like the, the complexity of humanity that happened in this area of the world. Wow, that's a uh, very complex. <laughs> and I, I can tell you're in your last year um, because you know exactly what you're talking about. And mm. You go in great details. <laughs> um, so how? Um, so you said um, you hope you you hope that it's your last year. Um, that's how you started. So um, do you say you hope it's your last year because uh, you've been affected by your research has been affected by COVID? Mm. It's been slowed down by COVID uh, in the summer mostly. I was planning to advance greatly, even actually finish most of my dissertation, at least the final draft to edit in the fall. And everything just went, like motivation just went down and we're like, what's the point of all this? And just because also the financial burden because I had to live on savings instead of uh, teaching or living on scholarships and doing research. I was supposed to go to Kinshasa in July. That was the big burner because that was really a big, uh, milestone in my research to actually go to the place like uh, what I'm what I'm talking about because I've seen movies I've seen videos I've seen documentaries I've read about it but I've never been there I've been to Africa I've been to Ivory Coast but I've never been to actual the, around the Congo River so that's something I was really really eager 
to, to do. Also, I was supposed to go back to France, which is resourcing, refreshing, and also go to Paris. And I, whenever I go to Paris, I always uh, meet with the Congolese diaspora there. And so it's very, even though it's not necessarily used in my research, it's always very helpful. Uh, as kind of a, it, make, it gives more meaning to what I'm doing. I feel like it's just okay, I'm talking to people who, who yeah. exist, you know, so, <laughs> so not just books. Yeah. So yeah. And so did the motivation come back or is it uh, getting worse? Like I saw there was a, an, an email, um, you know, about helping the graduate school wants to help um, last year students um, to stay an extra year. And um, mm. I'm sure the job market uh, must not be um, that open because <laughs> uh, uh, it was already kind of uh, stuck mm. before. So that must not help. Which doesn't, which must not help your motivation. And as you said, like, what's the point of all of this? I'm still having these thoughts, Namely, It's getting better, definitely. But also, well, there's a conference next week that I'm co-organizing that really was a big boost for me because it's about uh, one about Congolese people, mm -hmm. so people from the two sides of the river. And and one of them is actually, like, two of them actually are part of my dissertation. So it's super, super motivating. Uh, Alain Mabonku and the Biology. But uh, it's going back and forth. Uh, the job market is definitely not good. Definitely not. It, it was bad, but it's terrible now. Uh, you have like a few new jobs openings, but you know that it was already competitive. So, and, and a lot of hires are frozen in many places. So even if the job is actually listed, you're not even sure that I can consider it. Um, and yeah, I would say it's slowing, um, it's slowly coming back. Also the pressure of, I really want to have it finished because you have to finish, you know, whatever happens and move on to something else. Um, do you want to finish this year or do you want to uh, try to stay one more year um, thanks to the help of the graduate school? Well, I would definitely benefit from an extra year. That would be really, really helpful. But even though I would love to finish, I have the final draft, whatever happens by this year. So if I have the extension, I can just improve this draft and make it something a bit more, a bit stronger, a bit better. Okay. So what do you, it seems like you have a lot of pressure as a last year student. Um, I, yeah, I hear a lot of pressure, finishing the dissertation, finding a job, how do you relax? What do you do? Um, how do you take time for yourself to I, relax and try to think about something else? I do coffee interviews with my friend Honorine. <laughs> I call Honorine actually, that's what I do. <laughs> or she calls me. Um, I, well, playing music have been, has been helping a lot. Um, my old, I have an Irish band and I, we don't play in gigs. We don't have gigs anymore. We don't play in bars, we don't play anywhere. But we still meet now and then uh, in the place, in the nature. And it's a very cool place. It's very resourcing as well. I play video games also. Video games are very, like, it really to steam. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. I'm a, I have a kid inside. And um, what else do I do to relax? You cook? I do a lot of things. I do cook. It's some, sometimes to relax, sometimes because I have to. Sometimes it's relaxing, sometimes it's a burden. Depends. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to cook today. Uh, but I, I do cook now and then. Uh, well, I cook every day, but <laughs> sometimes I cook like, okay, I'm going to cook something. But it's not the thing I would think first when I say relax. Yeah, there would be more like music, definitely music. Watch a show, movie, uh, play video games. Read a book, even though I haven't read a book for pleasure in a long time. And... Um, Actually, it might sound weird, but I'm taking classes in linguistics, I, I mentioned earlier, that I don't have to take, but sometimes it's, it's a leisure for me. It's something like the thing I do to forget about the rest, and I like it, I enjoy it. That's because it's in Spanish, right? It's in Spanish, it's not, nothing to do with my main uh, doctoral studies. I do it just because, well, to get credit hours, but also because I like it. And I really like linguistics and phonology, this kind of scientific methodological approach. For me, it's always kind of a game, you know, it's like a riddle game. And you apply formula and try to find the problem and fix the, the issue. You know. So that's but why you like this class, because you took it because you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why too. So I took it all. Like, it's a class I take because I like it. Yeah. And I teach, and teaching sometimes also, it's, it's something I have to do with my teaching, but it's also the moment, like the, the moment, it's kind of fun. I like teaching a lot because it's this moment where if the class is 
if there is a response, it's kind of also a relaxing way. It's, it's stressful at times, but it's relaxing too. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking this time. Um, and uh, I hope um, you were able to uh, de-stress for this 20 minutes conversation with me. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I wish you good luck with your dissertation and with the job market and, um, and hopefully the bar will open soon so you'll be able to play again um, with your band and um, relax a bit more.